Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to talk to you about event management in Tokyo. And the big news here is Tokyo has moved the event management operator dashboard into service operations workspace, which I have right up here behind me. So that's the big news. Let me refresh your memory of what service operations workspace looked like before it got moved, or not service operations, the operator dashboard. So this is what it used to look like. It was nested within agent workspace, so we've still got the same nesting behavior going on. And you can see I had a service dashboard. I had behind my head there, you can see a list of alerts and I could filter the services and I could open an alert and I could view different things. I want you to pay close attention to this piece right here. Um, there's been some reorganization about things like that. And then behind my head, um, you've got these actions. There's been some changes there around how that's presented to the agent or the operator when they're looking at that workspace. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna stop on my way there and point out I am using a partner instance. Um, this is not a pure PDI or uh, demo instance. So I have on my instance only one playbook that I'm gonna show you. That's something new in the Tokyo release for this operator workspace. And um, I don't know if this is gonna be on your PDI. I don't know if this is gonna be on your version. Sometimes as partners, we get some enablement material and I just wanted to clear that up just in case you're like, hey, I don't see that. But what's new, you've got a landing page. So I'm looking at the operator workspace landing page. We can see the different groupings around alerts, assigned to me, assigned to my team, unassigned, open, monitored services. And then I've got a little breakdown of all the alerts that are assigned to me down here below. And I can click on this just like you'd expect and go straight to an alert to look at something. Now, this is where you can see it's starting to look a little bit different. Um, I've still got my details for the alert record, but what they did is they took that like big expansive list of tabs that were right there in the middle that went all the way across the screen. They consolidated it, and I actually approved, into this related records where now I can move through the different tabs of records that are related to this particular alert that I'm looking at. So this one has some probable root causes, a change request, and some alerts in the group that you can see there. And then behind my head, I wanted you to call your attention to this utilities piece here. So I've got search Google dependency view. That was in the actions view um, in the old agent workspace. So that's what's changed there. I have to say there's pretty much feature parity between the old version and the new version. I didn't see anything right away that we've lost access to. So kudos to the team there. What I found was strange is I just opened up an alert from the, uh, the landing page. So I was looking at it from the landing page. If I go into the list view for an alert, it looks a little bit different. And I'll show you here real quick. Under open alerts, there should be one. This is the one you're gonna see in the documentation on the doc site. It's an alert around, um, and this is the one that has a playbook associated with it. The volume of events with HTTP status code 408 is above normal. So if I open that alert, I've still got the same basic layout. I've got my details, I've got an overview. Um, and the overview, actually, let me pause here for a second. The overview is pretty substantial. So I've got a summary of the identified issue, an anomaly, uh, why it's appearing to be anomalous behavior, what is impacted, the configuration items, what services does that impact, breakdown there around application services and related service offerings. And if you look down below, as I'm changing that, it's changing this cause section. So I've got um, extracted from the log. Okay, so I think this is a health log analytics coming in, trying to provide reasons why you might actually be seeing this alert and then probably root cause it. That's all in the overview tab, which again was missing from when I clicked from the landing page. Details tab looks pretty straightforward, looks about the same. I've got a new um, utility up here around CMDB group visualization. We'll get to that in a future one. I've got my related records just like before, but here's what's new, playbook. So now you can build playbooks around your alerts to guide your operators through what they might need to do to mark that or to come resolve or remediate that particular alert. So I've got user impact, notify the business, and actual remediation of the alert. So I've got create a service degradation, create an incident, and those things right here, create a service degradation or create an incident, they're actually located, uh, let me move my head to the left. If you look here with this little light bulb, there should be some recommendations. Oh no, this is the incidents related. I think maybe, yeah, here it is. Quick incident, create a KB article, create a case. Um, so it looks like create a service de degradation is only right there where you see it. Now, if you're using the log analytics, there's a tab for the surrounding logs. I don't have any log data that I'm aware of in the system, demo or otherwise, so not sure what's going there. But I want to end 
on the more feature parity, and that is the operator dashboard. So this again, they're calling it the service dashboard. If you read the release notes, this is now a CSD aligned service dashboard, meaning the default view is around the service portfolio uh, or service based instead of looking at it the traditional way. And I've got some grouping around severity, business criticality, location, service group, there's that service portfolio, some grouping, some severity. But what you've come to expect out of this is still the same. So if I go to order status, it's going to do that pop up. I can jump into the service details for that particular service, have a similar summary CI health, CI timeline for that service, all of the mapped service information that I expect from there. Um, behind my head, I've got the service relationships for business apps and business offerings. I can view the different uh, infrastructure relationships right on that right-hand menu. So it's almost like the dependencies when you're looking at a configuration item or a service within the classic UI, um, some attachments and templates. And then I can jump out to the service map. I can jump to it here, or I could have jumped to it from that dashboard page. When I clicked on that, there was a link to the service map there. But let's head back over to order status and we'll see the service map show up. It's just a UI refresh, basically. This functionality was in the old Agent Workspace 2. Um, and like I said, from what I could tell, there was pretty much feature parity. So when I'm gonna do things after this map loads here, click on the settings to turn on whether to show changes or incidents or completed changes and progress changes, um, stuff like that. All that's still there so you can get to that information. I'm gonna have to cut out some time there because I was able to take a sip of tea before that loaded. I was a little disappointed. Um, it shouldn't have taken that long, but like I said, you can come in here, you can do the same things you're used to doing. So when I click on something here, it's gonna change what I see over there for the properties of whatever I clicked on on the right hand side. If I go to my settings, I can see the different settings for how to display, what's on the map, the layout, and then here's where I was talking about the current past and plan changes. So you can toggle all that on and off, outages, incidents, all that kind of stuff that you'd expect from the service map. And there is still the ability to view a historical service map. And I don't know how long this is going to take. Oh, I actually loaded faster than the regular service map took to load. But that is the big news with event management in Tokyo. They've moved all of your stuff into one workspace, that service operations workspace. Don't forget, this is a workspace you can come in and do some configuration around if you're familiar with the UI Builder and some tools that are available there for administrators to add and remove different components you may want to see. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think is interested in an improved event management or health log analytics experience within a, the new workspace experience in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.